I was doing that. Like, I was hoping you could, like, visualize that, but, like, I, I obviously you can't see me, so. Hello. I have a really sad puppy dog next to me who needs attention. That's right, I don't have a camera in your house. Bubbles! I want to see a world without pants. Because, see, the problem with pants is they're so restricting. Like, they go and they just, like, cover up so much of your body and, like, I just don't like the way clothes feel. So I was like, what if everybody just wore dresses and shorts? Like, you know, because those just give a more healthy breeze. You know, like, there's just more room and you're just, like... All okay, you know, you can wear a dress, or you can wear it shorts, I don't really care which, whatever floats your boat, just like, don't wear pants, because pants are restricting, you know, like, shorts give you more room, dresses give you more room, and they're just like, way more comfortable for people who have, like, sensitive issues, sensitivity issues, and that sort of thing. So, I, you know, there's no more that pants, there's dresses or shorts. You know why? Because they're comfy and easy to wear. Agreed. So, like, just, we're w down with pants, up with dresses, up with shorts. I, um, I have one quick question for you. Yes. How do we feel about kilts? Those are good, too. All right. R2! That's ace. I should have... I should have used that for my problem. Oh, you know, I can never remember my chores. As has been clearly demonstrated much earlier, I have a very short attention, and I just can never remember a thing. Like, and you know, I used to like walk around with like a pad of paper and a pen. Like, I would also forget that. It's so cumbersome to carry around, and I would eventually just lose it or forget about it. So, like, my chores would just never get done. <laughs> So, what did I do? I created this amazing electronic device that you can keep on your person at all times. It can be connected to your phone if you want, or you can get a separate uh, connection or a separate machine to do this entirely for you. It even comes with a pen. So, if you want to write it down as opposed to type out your jobs, you can do that perfectly. You can write down your entire schedule, any chores you have, anything. You could even write down random notes that you have. In fact, that's the reason I call it the notepad, so that you keep all your notes in a single place. It's small, it can fit in your pocket anywhere you go, and for those of you wearing dresses, it can fit in your purse just fine, whatever you want. It's your personal assistant, digitized. Thank you very much. Uh, I mean, do you need, do you need a writing implement like pens, 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 all right. Um. My lunch break is always in interrupted by angry chickens. Oh no, oh, they're probably <laughs> that can't possibly, you know, that that can't possibly have anything to do with me. Just because, you know, the other day they were in my way and I just was like, just gonna like slash at them a little bit, and it's just, ah, uh, but they don't die, so I slash at them a little more, and then it's like, oh uh, whatever, and then I start slashing them, and then I'm gonna go eat lunch. And, oh god oh god they're everywhere it's the cocoopolis oh god run <laughs> now just so you know in case we're all wondering it was a legend of zelda run hi i'm on board okay I'm i hope you enjoy my whirlwind of bird i'm cuckoo for coco puffs thank you searchlight i am here <laughs> I want to know about my... I want people to know about my Ravnica guild. <laughs> well, you know what? It's just the right time, considering the fact that Mash of the Gathering is now launching a new set. Rearrive at Ravnica, part two. Return to re-return to Ravnica. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> you, you tell everybody about how you could just... You, you buy boxes, right? And then in those boxes... There's actually, it's not cards, but money inside. If there, there's foils and mythics and rares and you, you, you open up your box and then you take all the good stuff and then you sell it and not play with it. And then you use that money to buy more boxes than what you started with. Rinse and repeat, it's pure profit. Once you tell all your friends that, they'll be sure to buy the game and actually, you know, play it with you later. You'll have so much chap to do that with. <laughs> Are you saying? That your guild is the Orzhov? No. 
It's really good. It's clearly, it's clearly Simic because I'm boosting to get more cards. All the cards. I never have a pair of pants when I need one. I so want get a dress or a pair of shorts. I want so. Bubbles Ideal Society where we don't need pants. But in the meantime, we have to conform with our pants ruling overlords until we can do follow through with our uprising. So in the meantime, conformist. Yeah, I know, I know, but listen, the time will be right when we rise. In the meantime, to blend in and to make sure that you can get by in this pants-conforming society, I'm proposing a solution here. So I never have a pair of pants when I need one. So in order to get by, that calls for a style of improvising. And I call, uh, I came up with this secret awesome technique in order to blend in. Uh, and I call this technique pants no pants no jutsu shirt style renovation. <laughs> and what it involves is if you're wearing shorts or if you don't have pants, you just rip off your shirt in two chunks and you tie them onto your legs. So if you're naked, they'll become your pants. Or if you're wearing shorts, they can act as extenders and cover your whole legs and serve as a pair of pants. It's one style of improvisation that you can do in order to blend in. It is comfy. It's just not as easy to wear. But this is in a, a time where you need to like blend in with pants and stuff. But anyway, yeah, that's my that's my suggestion. Just rip your shirt off and put it into pants. It's it's flawless. I know Voldemort. That is at least a three hundred dollar worthy idea. At least that much. I hope you. I feel like I chose a weird time to pop. Not... Oh, oh no! You chose the perfect time. Is to rip your shirt off and tie it to your legs. All right. It's a All right. Genius idea. To but I, I gotta jump on this real quick while it's on the screen. While this is on the screen, I thought that Searchlight was going to go way more acerbic and I was really into it because it was the re-arrive at Ravnica because Wizards of the Coast enjoys printing money. Look at their boxes of money that you could buy for more money. And I'm just like, <laughs> I thought I thought it was going to be really savage and I was like, oh my god, I, sh I, I hate on Nintendo all the time. I was like, oh my god. They literally were like, what if we came back to Ravnica for the third time because everyone likes Ravnica and we enjoy printing money. I was like, oh no. You remember, yeah. you guys should all yeah. vote for the Honestly, yeah, the Honestly I think them going back to Kamigawa is some sort of sign of the apocalypse. Oh, I, it is literally the third best-selling set of all time, which is wild. Uh, Ravnica, you yeah? No, the new Kamigawa set. It's the oh, first best okay. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think, um, all right, now I'm sorry if we're insulted by this, but I think that there's an overlap between, let's say, lovers of anime and Magic the Gathering. You're not wrong, because this was an anime set. <laughs> so, so when I, when I'm, when I hear, oh boy, Neo Tokyo went over pretty well, I'm kind of like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, but no. Oh, okay. What you were talking about was printing, printing money at Ravnica. So the last time they went to Ravnica, the first time it was called Ravnica City of Guilds. They went how, back. How did that they not win? It had Among Us in a dress. That's Come on. <laughs> what? It was a little too sus. I, I was like, I saw that and I was like, I gotta vote for it. Uh, I, I'm sorry, uh, next time I'll mention it. So they named the set Guilds of Ravnica. And then the next one was called Ravnica Allegiances because they wanted you to make it clear that the guilds were what mattered. <laughs> but they couldn't use the word guilds two times in a row, so they just changed it to a synonym for guilds. <laughs> I oh, Okay, all right. I need I need everyone to know this. There are some interesting prompts uh, to choose. Next. There, there are interesting prompts to choose, but one of them won my heart because it said "margarine of error." Okay, you all. <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding me? Who came up with a joke that's going to be better than the prompts? Or sorry, better than the, like the the answers. <laughs> what am I going to do? Like that's already funny. <laughs> R two goes first.
You know when you say Great, stop, I needed a little bit longer to uh, look at this. Oh, well. Uh, Jesus. Okay, I'm gonna You know, I need a smaller margin of error. Now, obviously what they were talking about was a migraine of error. Because what's really happening is they just have a migraine. They're trying to work on this. But their headache is just getting so bad and worse and worse. But they still need to be able to release that really important document that's coming out soon. <clears throat> And so as they're typing up really quickly, they accidentally add a letter. And they didn't use a spell check. Well, do I have the solution for you? It is the KMP. Did I mess up? Yes. How does this algorithm work? Well, you see, it is an algorithm that goes through your word and checks it against the real world. It goes through and matches every letter as it goes down and goes down. And you can see the steps as it's thinking until it gets to a wrong letter, and then it stops out completely. Follow the geniuses of Nuth, Morris, and Pratt as they help you find the right word. Third time? So I ran out of stuff for the title. But I could really use a smaller margarine of error. <laughs> I present to you the butter reductor factor. What is this? Why? Well, it was something I saw someone do once. What is this thing? Well, you take a, a, what what you would normally be considered something with which you would use to plane a slice of cheese off, but because of its you know high precision micro manufacturing. You know, you will get a much better margarine of error when trying to get yourself an amount of butter for those delicious, delicious recipes. Reduce your, cha reduce your chances of going over, over your margarine with this calorie cutter and bake away. God bless. Oh, we haven't done a hot pot pop plug in a while. I mean, you're right, but he's got to be there for that. Boros! I will present. All right, so. I could really use a smaller margarine of error. Because, like, you see, sometimes when I'm trying to do butter, the statistics just don't work out. My margarine of error is too big. So I was like, what if I got a butter teacher? My current teacher is just kind of slippery. Just kind of, you know, cuts corners, you know, gets, a, uh, it doesn't cut out the fat. So like, I was like, what if I just got a butter teacher? A teacher who is like able to just keep making, <laughs> just keep spreading the good news of statistics so that my margarine of errors will decrease. You know, like, economies of scale aren't really working here because, like, they're just spreading too thin. But, like, I, if my butter, uh, my current teacher is a bit fat, but, you know, a bit, just like a bit, you know, a bit overdone. So, like, if I get a butter teacher, then maybe, maybe my margarine of errors will improve. I'm sure it'll just melt up and uh, oh, <laughs> any good news. I I don't even know the algorithm, my friend. All right, fusion, rep repping the no pants. Are you fellas familiar with the Renaissance? That's a period in history where a lot of artists decide to inject some <laughs> culture and creativity back into their mundane lives when people had to shit in holes in the ground. So what? You know, I'm injecting some of that <laughs> energy and vigor into my solution for, you know, we provide a smaller margarine of error. History does not repeat itself, but it often rhymes. My crazy idea to get a smaller margin of error is to simply grab our toast and make it diet. 
Who gives a heck if your margarine is a little bit off? You have a giant canvas of toast with which to butter it. If you had too much butter, you have a giant piece of toast. That's probably enough. And if you don't have enough, then you no longer have a margarine of error. You just slap more margarine onto that shit. Then you have a really <laughs> awesome breakfast at that point. No matter how you slice this, <laughs> Uh, this is going to be proportionally in your favor, regardless of how much margarine you're stuck with, leaving you with little to no error. Um, can I just say the bread makes you fat yet? <laughs> that doesn't matter. Anyway, I'm going to pretend so now. Error. <laughs> the, <laughs> the sneaky ambush. I could really use a smaller margarine of error. Well, here's the thing. I've got a brilliant solution for you. Uh, you can definitely tell by my drawing here, it's irrational butter, because I can't believe it's not butter with plus or minus 0.5 <laughs> certainty, with a p-value of 0.05. <laughs> I really liked... So, whose prompt was that? I want you to, I want you to claim it, because it was amazing. Searchlight? Who, who did it? <laughs> it wasn't it me was, i did it like it wasn't me both of my props were using in round one yeah all right so yeah searchlight you you stab right, right. <laughs> you've been found out that i knew it was gonna be you because it was so good it was so good it was delightful we're just sitting on this so we can like praise you so in any case that was my stats joke for the marginal butter <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know why it came to my brain. I, <laughs> but it but was so good. That's that's a joke where it's like, the joke had already been written, and mostly I just wanted to pick it because I was like, what a great thing to just say out of the blue. <laughs> you always write the best prompts. Like, one time, you wrote something about Morgan Pack security. And, like, I got to make a pretty good joke out of that, but it wouldn't have come if you didn't write the thing about mortgage backed security. <laughs> Um, I, I want you to know, I don't eat breakfast, but one of the things I miss the most about breakfast is toast. I also do not Does it have toast for great, dinner. And the great taste of cinnamon toast crunch. No, no, you can't, you can't do that. And legitimately, the reason I have not had toast the most is that my bread tends to go bad faster than I can eat it. And I hate freezing and unfreezing bread. And yeah. my toaster broke. For like a year, I had one broken toaster. Yeah. Well, at least I'm consistent. I got three hundred dollars every uh, round. That, that one just knocked it out of the park. That was. I gotta say, I really like <laughs> breakfast food, but I do not eat breakfast, which is unfortunate because my favorite meals in most situations are breakfast-related ones. It's so like, ugh. Yeah, I feel like. That that only heightens your enjoyment of breakfast, though, when you go, like, when you're having breakfast, you know it's vacation. Like, it's a special occasion.